buy and read every one of these, eventually we become completely self-sufficient. Little self-contained units, all growing our own veg and, and baking our own bread and servicing our own cars. Yes, and thatching our own roofs. Well, if we are going back to nature, we might as well be picturesque about it. <laughs> Anything I do it myself would certainly be picturesque. Well, I thought you must be something of an expert with buying these. Oh, it's not for me. Good Lord, no, no, it's for Uncle Albert. Oh! But he's the one that's going to build a 40-foot solar reflecting greenhouse, isn't he? A little lean-to in his backyard, actually, to start his tomato seeds up. Still, people are being very enterprising all of a sudden, aren't they? Oh, you mean uh, Rita going off to Tenerife? Yes. Oh, a plane will have landed hours ago. She'll be probably all unpacked and lying by the pool now, I shouldn't wonder. Uh, with a glass of something long and cool in her hand. Mm. Me? I just hope Uncle Albert's got the kettle on. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. You fancy him, don't you? No, of course I don't. He's just a customer. You can fancy customers, can't you? And I reckon you do. Well, I reckon it's time you got off to school. Oh, you're not going to stamp me no rock and bossy now she's gone, are you? Yes. Yes, I am. Thought you might. And don't be cheeky. Must I have mascara in my marmalade? And must you do that down here? It's warmer. Here, do we sort of sort this lot out? There's 18 million pairs here. I've no idea who's his who's. Simple, then with those and his yours, and then without mine. Uh, which is mine, may I ask? Then with only one leg. Oh, my, we are sharp this morning, aren't we? You're supposed to keep yours separate. And you're oh! supposed to keep yours separate and oh, all. Oh, look, you've smudged me. Oh, I look like a rotten clown. And that's before she's got her makeup on. Oh, look, there are too many people in this house. Oh, I don't know. I think it's dead cosy. Well, you didn't live here before you lived here, did you? Oh, that's true. He must have been dead miserable. If being miserable is having a quiet cough and a smoke, well, then I'll take misery, thank you very well, it's much. It's not my fault. just splattered powder all over your toast. You what? Oh, flaming Emma. Now, that's it. I want you out. Out here. It's her powder. Oh, look, there's nothing personal, love, but it's just one of the rules of the house. The last in is the first out. And besides, it was it was never supposed to be a permanency, you lodging here. That's true. Well, I'll start looking for somewhere, then. In earnest? No, in Weatherfield. It's more convenient. Hey, I think I'll write to Rita, see what's going on out there. I fancy a complete change. Uh, I think I'll join you. If I lived out there, I wouldn't have to bother with this gun. I'd have a year round suntan. What? It said looking like a pasty faced little wheeze with black eyes. Uh, I'm glad you're going. Sugar it. Oh, are you trying to get round me? Does no harm to keep him with boss. Well, go on then. You can have a chocolate biscuit with it. I don't think it's going to become a habit because it's not. I think I'll give work out some Mr. Day. Go fishing or so. Play true one, oh, Darren, you won't. Who's to know? I'll know, and you know. Well, I'm not going to say no. I doubt you will. To be man as one pair of lad. It's an idea you don't want now, do you? Shh. What is it? Where did you hear something? Like what? Like somebody moving about upstairs. There's no one up there, is there? Well, there shouldn't be. Would you like to go and have a look for me? Why don't you go? Well, it's probably nothing, just at the door, banging. Or a mouse wearing footy boots. If you're really worried, why don't you down 999? I've got to go, I must register a summit. Getting married in the morning. Ding dong, the bells are gonna chime. Call out to copper, let's have a whopper, but get me to the church on time. I'm gonna be there in the morning. I can't believe it. Oh, hey, uh, blow your nose, stop <laughs> sniffing. Getting married to Mr. Fairclough. See that wet? See that dry? Cross my heart and hoped. What do you mean to Mr. Fairclough? Who else would I be making an honest man out of? Their line pilot. Hey, what did they say when he didn't go? Were they very cross? Well, Chief Steward didn't actually clap his eyes on me, otherwise he would have been. And have they actually called you for it? I'd almost got through passport control. Or to be accurate, I was just walking through gay when I suddenly saw this fella sitting there mm. in the checksum. And he were a dead ringer for Paul Newman. 
and the full horror of it suddenly came over me. Oh, that you were leaving your loved one behind? No, that I'd have to show this Paul Newman my passport photo. Well, he'd only have busted out laughing, oh, wouldn't he? Great. <laughs> so I trolled back to where Len was sitting, and I said, if their offer's still open, I'll take it. And Daff Lomax hadn't sense to say no. Because he loved you. That's why I asked you in the first place. And I thought it was for me mushy pee. Oh. oh, are you thrilled? Do I have to be? You're thrilled enough for both of us. Do you want me to say it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Shall I say yeah, it? Go on. I'm thrilled. Oh. <laughs> no, seriously, I am. I'm very, very happy. Well, that's something you don't hear a lot of people saying these days. No. And this time, I'm not going to change my mind. Oh, I should hope not. No, you deserve to be happy. You both do. And if there's anything I can do, you know, as a friend. Well, yeah. as a friend, there is. Yeah. Will you lend me a pair of panties? Oh. And a nighty. It's a pity we don't take same size feet. Well, I didn't actually get on plane, but my flaming luggage did. I just hope that bikini's behaving itself in Tenerife without me. <laughs> oh, Rita. Oh, Rita. Are you sure she's wrapped up properly? No, she's only got a nappy on because I want her to be a nudist. Of course she's wrapped up properly, you puddin'. I do know how to look after babies, you know, as well as husbands. Oh, all right, superwoman, I get the message. You're very put upon. Nah, I'm only having a little moan. I don't mind coming down here a couple of mornings. It gets me out of the house, keeps me in touch with what's going on, and it saves you from hiring another typist. Mm, you might be a bit more smart and sexy than what you are. Exactly. Oh. Hello, young lovers. Buddy, I'll look at him. <laughs> oh, girlfriend off to foreign parts for three months. You might think he'd try to look at least a bit miserable. I'm not. Why not? He was like a bear with a sore bum yesterday. She's not. Not what? Gone. She hasn't gone to Tenerife. Well, you took her to the airport. I know what. I fetched her back again, didn't I? You mean she's changed her mind? Changed her mind last night, and very soon her name. Listen, it's a bit early in the morning for. Hey, <laughs> not. <laughs> hey, it is. You're getting married, aren't you? Oh, when? Soon. <laughs> yeah. Terrific. Hey, Tracy, did you hear that? Yeah. You're Uncle Lane's you. going to be a blushing <laughs> bridegroom. Clap handies. Technically, they're all the same, you know, the stone barn. <laughs> You don't look a very unhappy member of the club anyway. Oh. Is she here today as our typist or your missus? Our typist. Right then, typist. It's too early for champagne, so get the kettle on. Oh. Oh. Hey, do you reckon she really meant it? Well, like Elsie said, it's nothing personal, but she never said it was permanent. Yeah, I know, but I sort of hoped it'd work out that way. Yeah, trouble is, there's such a lot of you. There's only one of me. Yeah, but you're not exactly a dwarf, are you? And it is only a little house, and there are two of us living there already. No, I'll cut my legs off and call me Shorty. Hey, love, we've got a visitor. Yeah. It's a bit mucky. Well, you'd be a bit mucky too if you spent all night in back alley. Hello, love. How do you know it ain't got a perfectly good kennel waiting with wall to wall bones? Oh, look at it. It's a stray, homeless, unwanted. Takes one to no one. Da, 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 oh, go and get da, something to da, eat, da. will you? Like what? Well, a bit of pork in the fridge or a few slices of bacon. Well, go on, shift yourself. Who's a little lovely? Lovely boy. Who are they? Hey, it's mothers like you, you know, that get pubs about me. Parking your prams outside there and then coming in here getting filled up with gin. It's not gin, it's lime and soda. She's not parked in the street, she's parked in your yard. And I'm only in here for a couple of minutes. Any more can play. You don't think she'd miss out on the main event, do you? Not in a million years. How do you know if they'll be in? Want to bet? No. Are you sure it's not Avignon? Practical joke. You don't get mad for a practical joke, true. Yeah, well, I'm baffled. I was in the shop this morning. There's no sign of Rita. And according to Mavis, she was safely in Scotland. Right, it's a very fast-moving scene round here, Ken. You've got to be young and nippy like me to keep up with it. Well, if it's true, I hope they'll be very happy. Oh, I think they will. Yeah. I've had a few rounds, though, haven't I? Mm. I mean, others than me never had a row, you know? Not till after we were men. Well, exactly. Most people save their rounds after they got married, don't they? So you could say they've got over the world. <laughs> well, that's all. Hello, hello, hello. We were just talking about... I can't imagine, mate, what? The Euro butter mount. I, <laughs> I uh, take it, I've got to take your number out of my little black boot. Well, you'll have to see me financing. If you don't, mate, they'll thump you. <laughs> hey, come on, get them all in, Congratulations. Hey, are you wishing it were you, sunshine? You've been nasty. No, love, I, I was just wishing it were me, that's all. 
Hey, bag's my first kiss off, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll get another one then, won't I? <laughs> hey, that's enough. Go on, you spoiled sport. I wish you much happiness, the pair of you, and I mean it. Thank oh, you, man. Love. Come here, kid. Thank hey, now then, get him in now. Get him in. But angels are so few. Hello, visitors. I thought you was at your dinner at Rovers. Oh, not today, Chuck. I'm having it here today. Seeing as I didn't have a nice, quiet, peaceful breakfast time, I'm having a nice, quiet, peaceful dinner time. Just me, a tub of cottage cheese, Narold Robbins. I oh, just nipped back from shop to feed, um... Albert. Oh, I was uh, waiting to be introduced. He's a stray. Yes, he'd have to be, wouldn't he? Nobody in their right minds would admit to owning him. Well, he just came at yard this morning and me and Gail thought, that's sorry for you him. You cordially invited him to join Elsie's zoo. See who that is. And if it's an homeless elephant, tell it the bath's full. Shh. You, Albert, me, Muggins. How do you do? Hello, darling. Have you got a minute? I want a word. Oh, I'd have several when she skedaddles and takes her four-legged flea bag with her. <laughs> Where? Well, anywhere, but out of it. Now, look. Look at me when I'm talking to you. You've been wined and dined, now off it. Here. Why, Albert? Oh, it was Gail's idea. She said he looked a bit of a scrounger. <laughs> oh, dear old Albert will be pleased. Go on, skedaddle. Come on, love. We know we're not wanted. Shh. You know, all I ever wanted in my old age was a bit of peace and quiet. You'll get it, darling, in your old age. Thank you. Now, what can I do for you? Uh, Rita's back. Don't be daft. She's in Tenerife. She's not, you know. She changed her mind at the airport last night. Changed her mind? Yep. Why? We're getting married. Fancy. Well, I hope you have better luck than I did. How am I supposed to take that? You're supposed to take it the way it's meant. I hope you have better luck than I did. I really mean that. Well, some marriages work, you know. I mean, yours weren't all bad. Oh, no, not all bad. Just bits. Well, that's what we're hoping for. Well, neither of us think we're going off hand in hand into the sunset forever and ever, amen. No. Well, if it's what you want. It's what we both want. Yeah. You know, she's given up an awful lot to stop here. I think here. what she's gaining. Oh, no bargain. No. No, but I'll do my best. Yeah. She's all right, you know, is Rita. I mean, she is for me. If I work on this, there's no reason why it shouldn't be a success. I'm not going to get a third chance. No. Good luck, kid. Be happy. You darling. See you. Oh, shut up. Do you know? If I'd put that in a book, people would have said it was too far-fetched. I mean, letting the plane fly off without it. Yeah, it would have been Hollywood, wouldn't it? Ooh. Hey, suppose... Suppose she said she'd changed her mind and then he turned round and said he had. Pardon? Well, she decided she wasn't going to Tenerife and then he decided he didn't want to get married after all. Why well, would he do that? Well, he might have only asked her because he knew she was going away. Didn't think there was much chance of her accepting. Oh, I think that's a very cynical comment to me. Yeah, so do I. I blame my husband for that, who's cynical about most things. Do you know, he reckons they won't even get as far as the altar. He says they've been nearly there too many times. He's even made me a bet oh, on that's it. That's horrible. Yes, he can be horrible as well as cynical. Still, it was the beast in him that attracted me in the first place. You know, I'm glad I didn't wait till I was her age to get a gold ring. I mean, by the time I'm as old as Rita, I could have a grandchild and still be young enough to enjoy my own life. Not all of us fortunate enough to be able to do just what we want to do, just when we want to do it. Have I said so much? Oh, no. Oh, see ya. Oh. I never thought I'd be doing this today. You mean with me? I mean with anybody. <laughs> Didn't you have somebody lined up ready to jump in my shoes the minute I taxied off runway? How did you know about them? Oh, seriously. Haven't we got to talk? 
Talking is the last thing I want to do. Well, we have. I mean, um, little details like dates and things. That is assuming you still want to get married. You can take it that at this moment in time, the answer's in the affirmative. Councillor Fairclough, you are in the chair. How about June? Nah, it's too far away. Only two months. And I'll be two months older. Now we've wasted enough time as it is. Eager beaver. Well, nah, there's no point in hanging about. It's not as if we've got to find somewhere to live, is it? Mm -hmm. No, we've both made up our minds. Let's get on with it. Let's uh, call the bands. Do you mean you want to get married in three weeks? Yeah. Why not? Well, I'm going into work for a start. Uh, it doesn't take you three weeks to do that. And then there's all the rest. I mean, you want a bit of a reception. You're not planning on putting a ladder against bedroom window, are you? I was open to And they're loping. Mm, yes. Listen, if they don't actually see us married, they'll never believe we're married. Ginger. We are going to push the boat out in style, and not for their benefit, for yours. Well, a little party would be nice. It'll be the biggest do they've seen around here since VJ night. Well, we'd better get down to register office and book a date. Then we can look for somewhere to have reception. Can't have it here, it's too small. Registry office? Why, a Why not a church? Do you want to get married in the church? Yeah. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Funnily enough, I do. Hmm. Put him out! I can't, it's pouring. And he's been sitting on doorstep all afternoon waiting for me. He knows me. He knows a mug when he finds one. Is that you? I did then! What shall I do with him? Shove him up my jumper. Oh, so the whole family's here, is it? Well, he just followed us in. Yes, well, he would, wouldn't he? I mean, he knows which side his bed put on, doesn't he? You did right to call him Albert. He knows where to get free grub and all. You don't mean... No, I don't mean... He's already eaten me out of house, gnome. Don't tell me that cold pork in the fridge got up on its own two legs and walked out. Oh, pigs have got four legs. And octopuses have got eight, and we've got none of that in the fridge for us suppers either. Was hungry, Elsie. You can't stand by and watch a living thing starve. Oh, well, in that case, get round to Jackson's Chippy and get three lots of fish, chips and peas. He's pouring. It was you that said you couldn't stand by and watch a living thing starve. We'll have to if you don't get round to J Jackson's quick. That's what we've got now, Elsie. You go. You're the one that lumbered us. we are both go. Well, what about King Kong? Can't he stay? No, he can't. I've told you. We're all out at work. How can he? Well, you won't mind as long as we come on and see him at lunch hour. Look, love, when you get your new landlady in your new digs, ask her if she objects to animals. In the meantime, keep your mind on what you're doing. Oh, all right. He can stay for tonight as long as he doesn't keep me awake with his yowling. Oh, he won't yowl, as long as he's dry and fed. Now, now, Willie. Oh, Oh, look, you, you better get him a tin of dog food or something oh. uh, uh, from the corner shop here. You're kind, Elsie. Honestly, you're smashing. Uh, yes, and I shall want paying back. Remember that, which should have been today, if I might remind you. Oh, of course. I'll get you a small bottle of eggnog as well as my treat. Oh, never mind the flattery. Just skedaddle. Oh, on second thoughts, make it half a bottle and tell her to put it on the account. I could do with a booster. Well, don't act that way. It's not been my day either. No, I, uh, I think you can. Anyway, the vicar will let you know. Yeah, it's just that I don't want to look a complete idiot. You know, I have been divorced. Yeah, but then your ex-wife died, didn't she? So, technically, you're a widower, I suppose. Anyway, I don't think it matters nowadays. I think if you, even if you have been divorced, you can get married in church. Some vicars kick up a fuss. It's what Rita wants, is it? Yeah, it's what I want, too. But don't look so surprised. I'm not a complete heathen, you know. You want the lot? Top hats, tails and carnations? Well, I'm not too sure about the top hat and tails. Well, not for the girls, anyway. But I could do with all the rest of it, like you say. The lot, yeah. Church bells, wedding bells, everything, yeah. He talks like a love sick teenager. Yeah, well, he's happy, isn't he? Well, why oh, not? You. Anyway, you've got a great girl there, Len. You don't need me to tell you that, of course. It's team, aren't we? You're next, you know. Do me a favour. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean that to be a joke in bad taste. What I'm saying is that you've got the whole of the rest of your life before you, haven't you? I mean, a, f a fella shouldn't be on his own. Are hey, you listening to this? It concerns you. Recruited at club already. I just don't want you two to be a couple of old maids, that's all. Think about it. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, where is she, then? Deserted you already, She's actually. probably waiting for little Mavis. I promised her a slap-up do tonight. Mm. And she'll earn it. I wouldn't like to be in her shoes for the next few weeks. Can you imagine? Dan's retail leader. Why should she? Oh, come on. She'll be that busy getting her little self-organised. She'll hardly have time to set her toe inside that cabin. And who's going to be the Cinderella of that little outfit, eh? Mavis. Hey, I'm sorry, Rita. I don't understand you. Well, it's very plain. I'm back. 
Yes, but I'm the manageress now. Mr. Fairclough appointed me. Only because I wasn't going to be here. But I am here. So but we're back to square one. That's not fair. You can't just walk out and then walk back in again as if... As if, as as if, if nothing had happened. I haven't. I've got myself engaged and I'm going to be married. Yes, I know that, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about my job. Mavis, love, be reasonable. I'm not only coming back. I'm coming back as the boss's wife. You don't surely think you can still be in charge, do you? Well, I don't see why not. I mean, an agreement's an agreement. Look, I don't want any arguments tonight. I'm supposed to be happy. So come on, let's get going, or you'll think I've gone to Tenerife after all. <laughs> Leave it. Oh, no. No, no, no. It might be somebody who wants to know what I want for a wedding present. Uh, it's going to be a big do, is it? But select, Ellen. I don't think your Hilda needs to bother taking a mink out of mothballs. No, I don't think anyone need bother ironing their party frocks because I think I've been stood up. Oh, <laughs> oh there you oh, there you there you are. Are. Oh, my darling. Have you been behaving yourself out of my sight for oh, the last no, couple no. of hours? Mavis, what is your pleasure? Oh, I don't know. I can never think when anybody asks me what I want to drink on an occasion. <laughs> Make your way along the shelves, love I mean, you can't go wrong. <laughs> I have a snowball. A large please. snowball, please, oh, darling. Okay. And what about your friend? My friend will have a vodka and lime. Thank you. Can I have a word? Hey, just change the mind. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, darling? Something wrong? Uh, just had a phone call from my agent. A bit nasty. Yeah. About me letting him down, not going to Tenerife. You told him we were getting married. Yeah, but he said not to make any plans for a honeymoon because I might be required in court. Oh, John. <laughs> something we can do. Like what? Well, drastic actions call for drastic measures. We just have to tell us straight. No messing. If he goes, we go. Great. I'll start packing. Well, there must be something we can do. Yeah, there is. Give in gracefully. Wherefore art thou oh so silent, Mavis? Have I wronged thee so much? Have I? You know you have. I've done you a big favour if you did but know it. Can get very heavy, can responsibility. Oh, come on, Mavis. Stop sulking. What's manageress's job between friends? I'm not sulking. You are. I'm not. Ah. Listen, what would you say to a lovely cup of hot, steamy, milky coffee and egg on toast? With perhaps a rash or two of bacon on the side, not to mention the odd grilled tomato? Would that put madam in a more favourable mood? It might. Oh, good. Well, you just nip back and make it, cos I'm that hungry I could eat half a pig. Oh, please, Elsie, please, just one more night. No! Just until we find him a new owner. Susie, I've said no. Have you found it yet? What? The mate to this. What do you think I was looking for, me wellies? Dog hater. Look, Susie, I am not, repeat, not a dog oh, hater. Oh, just this one you hate, is Oh, it? leave it alone, will you? How can you, Elsie? How can you be so cruel to a poor defenceless creature? How can you be so heartless? Shh! Just look at that little face. What has he ever done to you? Look, Susie, I've told you once, no, but I'll tell you one more time. We cannot have a dog in this house because we all go out to work. It would not be fair on either it or us, all right? I could always come back and see him in my lunch hour. Oh, yes, of course you could till the novelty wore off and then it me muggins looking after it, feeding it. Walk it's not an issue to him. Either way, it's not stopping. Now, is that clear? Shift it out of the way. Have oh, you found please, it yet? Yes. Just a trial run, yes. just to see how we get on. You never give up, you, do you? Not known for it. Oh, please, Elsie, please. You'd wear away a stone, you would. Look, if I agreed, it would be entirely your responsibility. I'll do everything. You would have to walk it twice a day, morning and I'll night. I'll walk his feet off. Well, I'll think um, about... What the hell is this? I think Albert took a fancy to it. Right. That is it. I want him out. Oh, you out, do you understand? And another word out of you, madam. Just one, and you will follow him. Sharpest. Now shift out of me when you're there, have you? Well, we're making progress, at least I am. How'd you make that out? Well, yesterday I was definitely out today. Today somebody threatened to throw me out. Mm. And what about him? Good question. 
You could try, Mavis. If for uh, novelty value alone, you could try thinking of other folks' problems. Oh, like whose? Yours truly. Oh. I mean, here am I, about to be sued by a penny-pinching agent. And do I complain? Well, do I? He won't sue. You don't know Benny Stone. He's the original Scrooge. And like you said, I did break my contract. I signed it and then broke it, and now he's going to make me pay for it in that order. Yes, well, it won't alter my position, though, will it? Your position is as it's always been, Mavis Mine. My friend and helpmate, who could ask for anything more. Yes, Stanley. A, a packet of those... I uh... didn't ask for more, Rita. I was given more. You and Mr Faircloth gave me the job of manager just because it suited you, and then you took it back because it suited you. But that isn't what gets me. What gets me is that I'm just supposed to accept it without so much as a word. Oh, and that's what gets you, Yes, is it? it is, since you well, asked. shall I tell you what gets me? I chucked that job in Tenerife because I was getting wed, not to spite you, and certainly not to end up in court, courtesy of Benny Stone. Now, I know you're disappointed that you're not manageress. I'm disappointed that you're disappointed. But that's the way it goes, Petal. So it's no use going round with a face like a wet weekend. So give us both a smile and give us a break and change the flaming subject. Yes, sir. Uh, pack of them in. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. Won't be sobbed off. Not again. Not this time. That's fighting talk. Definitely. If you won't listen to me, I shall go to somebody who will. Oh, and who might that be? Your future husband. I know, Mrs. Wilson. I know I promised. Look, you definitely will get your washing machine from from the yes, yes, you will. Yep. I know I did, love. I know I did. Look, I haven't got two pairs of hands now, have I? Yes, of course, but he's got other work on me. I don't even want to be flipping best man. That is not the point, Ray. The point is that if Len Fairclough Esquire was good enough for our wedding, then Ray Langton's good enough for his. Church or no church. Oh, give over. Look, I'm not kidding, Ray. If he doesn't ask you, it's an insult. No more, no less. Is he, Ted? Oh, you just can't see it, can oh, you? Oh, sorry. Uh, oh. Is there... Uh, is he out? Yeah, he's in there on himself. <clears throat> Look, Ray, if he doesn't ask you, it only means one thing. He doesn't think you're up to it. And if you had half the sense you were born with, you'd see that for yourself. Oh, definitely, definitely, yes, Rock, yeah. Alf, remind me never to make promises I can't keep. I thought that's what the building business were all set up on. False promises. Ah, oh, we're not false when we make them, are they? Only when you break them, eh? Ah, just about. What's all that, then? Wrote for the new motorway extension action committee want to meet in tomorrow. So if we're going to present a good case, you better know what we're talking about. Aye, ah, forewarned is forearmed, eh? That's it, sunshine. Anyway, two o'clock, town hall, can we do room for you, OK? Yeah, it's good there, mate. Hey, Alf, hey, I'm glad you came in, mate. I wanted a word with you about the wedding. Oh, yeah? I'm, uh, I'm looking for a best man. <laughs> How are you fixed? Oh. Can you not get it through your skull that I do not want to be best man? And if you don't stop dropping in like death charges, we might finish up without an invite to the flipping wedding at all. I just casually asked him who we had in mind for the best man. Casually? You're about as casual as a soldier on flipping parade. Oh, don't exaggerate, Ray. You as good as volunteered, Miss Services. Not, OK. Yes, fine, look. Never better. <laughs> Ta-da. Right, you get in there and tackle him. No. Raymond! No. It's you it's so important to. You ask him. Shall I tell you why it's so important? Because I don't want people thinking you can't be trusted. Because that's what it means, you know. When somebody asks you to be a best man, it means they trust you. So just get in there and do your stuff. Go on. Is he in? Uh, well, he is, but really. Right, I won't keep him long. I'm sorry to barge in like this, Mr. Fairclough, but you did ask me to be the manageress, Mr. Fairclough, and I don't remember you saying it was only if Rita didn't come back. In fact, I don't think there were any conditions to it. You offered it and I accepted it, but what I can't accept is just being demoted overnight and having to go along with it. And if I don't get their treatment, I, 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 I'll... I, don't stop there, love. I'll take you to an industrial tribunal. You know what? I'll take you to an industrial tribunal. I'm sorry to make threats, but I'm very, very angry. Are you? Yes, I am. And not without cause, Miss Riley. Pardon? I mean, you look at it from my point of view. Or better still, look at it from Rita's point of view. I mean, you can't expect her to work under you now that she's been a boss for so long, as any tribunal would see. So I have to suffer, do I? Well, nobody suffers, do they, love? 
I mean, we're back to square one, really. Nobody gains and nobody loses. Any tribunal would say that. I've lost. No, you haven't yes, lost your job. I've lost my manager's job. Yeah, but you're still working, aren't you? That's the important thing. Well, yes, I suppose so. Well, that's the test, darling. Believe me. I know about these things. Well, what about the rise you promised me? What's happened to that? Ah, that worked both ways, though, didn't it? I mean, I was going to offer you more money for more responsibility. So I end up getting neither, do I? Uh, well... I'll tell you what I'll do now. I'll, uh, I'll make a deal with you. I'll give you 50% of the rise and we'll call it quits, eh? And I'm breaking the pay code to do that. What do you say? Well, all right. I don't really see why anybody has to be manager. I mean, why should anybody be in charge? We, we could be equal partners. Oh, you and Rita? Yes, why not? It's one thing you're overlooking there. Any minute now, Rita's going to be the boss's wife. Yes. And she's going to be even more insufferable then, isn't she? Were you surprised when he told you? Were you? Ah, no, I asked first. Well, yes and no. Yes, because he finally seemed to have made up his mind and seemed to mean it, and no, because, well, that's Len, isn't it? Always doing what you least expect him to do. I always thought she played too hard to get myself. Yeah. Well, it paid off, didn't it? You know, I tried it once, the hard to get routine. This fella I was seeing at Bolton, you know the tie, can't bear to be tied down, so I played it dead casual. What happened? He wrote to me saying that since I was clearly no more interested in him than the paint on the walls, he was calling us today. Joined the Navy, signed on for nine years. <laughs> oh, my God. But anyway, who says I'm in for a corona? Nobody. I'm just saying that a walk a day can stroke at bay. Why else see all these middle-aged men jogging round in tracksuits? Well, he doesn't have to walk, does he? A few press-ups would do the trick. <laughs> anyway, I've never felt bitter in my life. Never. Well, what's this, then? Insulation <laughs> against a shipwreck. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do worse yourself, Mrs Turpin. But... Well, think about it. A dog not only provides company and defends house and all, but it keeps your body in trim. While you exercise it, you exercise yourself. It gets rid of all them excise calories and flab. Flab? What flab? All the best flab fights in the world are dogs. I haven't got any flab. Well, not about. Hey, you can count me out as far as dogs go. And as far as fighting the flab goes, I prefer a dignified surrender. Yeah, I'm here and all. <laughs> oh, please, Mrs. Turpin, just take a look at him. You don't want to resist him once you see him, on it. There's no point, love it. I'm allergic to them. To dogs? To forking out on dog food. It all amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? It does, love. Go on, love. We'll have uh, a pint and a half. Mm. Oh, no, 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 no. On second thoughts, two halves. Correction. We'll have a vodka and tonic and a pint. I'm paid. Now I know how you did it. Were your money you were after all along? Wrong. All them free wedding gifts. Oh, yeah. Have you made out your list yet, or are you leaving it to luck? No, I am, to be honest. I can't be bothered. It's much bother. Even more bother if everyone sends you the same thing, though, won't it? Yeah. Hello! I spy with my little eye. Betty, come and feast your eyes on this. Oh! Hey, isn't that same one you gave her last time? Well, of course it is. I've just did it clean, that's all. Ain't it practical? That's what I love about him most. Swine. <laughs> uh, listen, I shall be going in a minute. I've got a dinner to cook before I face Mavis. Get him in again if you want. And make sure you get him to one, will you? And don't be late, otherwise you'll have a couple of burnt chops. Hey, ladies should never drink on their own. It's bad for their image. Oh, you don't say. Definitely. So there's a gin over yonder when you're ready. Hey, I haven't congratulated you yet. Isn't it more usual to congratulate the fella? Oh, it depends who does the running, doesn't it? Yeah, I haven't done any running, love. I just stopped running away, that's all. Go in now, Hey, sweetheart, have you heard from your mutual friend again? Eh? Benny Stone. Oh, no, I dig you both. Oh. In that case, you could be in the clear. Well, who knows? See you. Ah. Rita Littlewood. She does work here, does she not? Oh, yes, but she's out at lunch at the moment. I can get her for you if it's urgent. It's urgent, love. Tell her it's Benny Stone's here. She'll know what it's about. Benny Stone? Second thoughts, leave it. I'll just give her a surprise when she comes back. I'll have a cup of whatever that is while I'm waiting. Well, it's coffee. <laughs> you don't say. I do. <clears throat> Good food here. <laughs> Sounds like it. Where did you say Vita was again? Oh, she'll be at number nine Coronation Street now, cooking Mr. Fairclough's dinner. Nine Coronation Street. Right. We do snack lunch. Gonna find Rita. Funny fella. <laughs>
Weatherfield. All right, Mavis. Now, just take a deep breath and start again. Who was where, when? Hey, Mavis. Find Len. He should still be in the Rovers. Find him and get him over here straight away. Never mind the flaming cabin. Just get hold of Len pronto. I wish I'd made out of that door. Look, Elsie, about Albert. No, I've said no, Susie, for the last time, no. I'm buying you a pair of shoes, if that's what you're bothered about. It is not. Where is he, anyway? Oh, I've let him loose. Where? Well, he's round back a factory yonder. Oh, that's a good girl. Poor little thing. Look, if you want to feel sorry for somebody, start feeling sorry for me. Six quid worth of sh good shoe leather he got through. What's that? What? That thumping noise, can't you hear it? It's next door. It sounds very like it if it's coming from upstairs it to me. It is next door. They're having another bust up. Now sit down, I'll make you a cup it of tea. I've always played fair with you, haven't I? Well, haven't I? Oh, skip the commercial. Get to the point. It's been the best all the way along the line. The best rates, the best gigs. All out of the goodness of your art. Now to do with your rotten ten percent, I suppose. Look, Rita, I came here to give you the chance to settle this friendly out of court with no fuss. If you want to play it rough, fine, we'll play it rough. Look, I should have warned you. All right, I admit it. And I would have warned you, only I didn't know myself I weren't going till last minute. I didn't chuck that job because I got cold feet, you know. Or because I went off Tenerife, all that sunshine and what have you. As I keep telling everybody, I chucked it because I'm getting wed. And I keep telling you, I'm 400 quid out of pocket. Somebody's got to pay for it. That somebody being me, of course. Right, first time. Well, the hell am I going to lay my hands on 400 quid, pray? Knowing you as I do, Rita, you're unlikely to contemplate marriage to a bloke who can't call his shirt his own. He must have a bit put by, surely. More than a bit if I know anything. Why not ask him, eh? Why don't you ask him yourself? He's here. Well, this, I take it, is your Mr Stone? It is. And he's only saying I owe him 400 quid, would you believe? Is that right? See for yourself. Uh, in case you're wondering, that name and address belongs to my solicitor. That looks a bit steep to me. I've got overheads, haven't I? It says here that you're missing out on the commission you should have got from, uh, from Rita. Underneath, it says that uh, you had to pay out the airfare for her replacement. So? Didn't you get commission from her? What if I did? Well, it looks to me as if you're trying to get two lots of commission out of one job. I've got expenses, haven't I? Like phoning up Tenerife every other minute to find out why mad and me I didn't bother turning up. All right, then, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you 200 quid and we'll call it quits, eh? 200 quid? It, it cost me that in her first. Right. But I can't see what else she's supposed to have cost you. Oh, I'll let him sing for his money. I'll sue for the money. That's what I'll do, my love. Well, and end up more out of pocket than you are now. Use your loaf, mate. Take the 200 quid. It'll cost you five times more than that if you take it through the court. And even then, you might end up with less than I'm offering you now. 300 and you're on. 200. 200 it is. Who do I make it out to? You? Benny Stone. S T O N E. As in getting blood out of. She treats me like a helpless child, they both do. Well, they wouldn't have offered you the manageress job if they thought that now, would they? Yeah, he's got a point there. And as for the extra responsibility, well, take it from me, it's just extra worry and extra headaches. It's not worth it. Well, I'd still like to have tried. I mean, I'll never know now, will I, whether it'd have been any good at it? I thought you'd tried before. Oh, yeah, but not for very long. Well, look at it this way. If you did have the job and found out you really couldn't do it, how would you feel then? Oh, I'm with you, love. I mean, responsibility is trust, isn't it? And if you never have it, how can you prove whether you're trustworthy? Well, exactly. I mean, you take Ray, for instance. I cannot get it through his head why I want him to be the best man at Len's wedding. He thinks it's just a bit fun of it. Oh, is uh, Ray reckoning to be the best man at Len's wedding? Oh, no, he's not. I want him to be. I'll tell you what, if he's not the best man, I want to know the reason why. You know, you're proving to be a very expensive lady. First, I've got to fork out for Mavis to keep her happy, and then your agent. I don't think I can afford you. Second thought. Oh, boy. What do you think? 
Oh, you can afford it. I hear tell you're loaded. Oh, I. So is that. Remind me to show you my bank statement sometime. Promises, promises. In the meantime, if you want to earn your keep, cash your eye over that little lot. What is it? Wedding guest list. What about the oggies? What about the oggies? You haven't got them down. Nor any Yates for my great Aunt Lucy. You have to draw the line somewhere. Wedding receptions are supposed to be for a chosen few, not a cast of thousands. You reckon Ken Barlow for best man, do you? Don't you? <laughs> it would be very tricky because I've already asked Alf Roberts. Well, you might have told me. Well, what's it to you who's best man? Well, it happened to me my wedding as well, you know. And it's my best man. So I don't get consulted. I'm consulting you now, aren't I? <laughs> After the event. Look, let's get something straight. I'm not a flaming dormer. I don't want to be treated like one. In future, any decisions that have to be made, we'll make them together, all right? You're asking me, you're telling me. I'm telling you. I don't like being told. Then you just have to get used to it, won't you? Among other things. All right. You just cost me 200 quid. Is that all the thanks I get? Gail, will you get your ear off that wall and come and give us a hand? Don't you want your bath before we start eating? Why, what for? What's the hurry? Well, if you leave it till after we've washed up, there won't be any hot water, will there? Yeah, that's true. Right, I expect you to have these finished by the time I come down. Come on, get mashing. Where is he? In our room. Oh, no. I've got it all planned. If we keep him for a few days on the QT, she'll have to let us keep him because he's been no trouble. What if he barks? He won't bark unless he wants a walk or he's hungry. I will have to see he wants for neither. She'll kill us if she finds out. Oh, you stop worrying. You don't know Elsie. What do you want? I'm sorry. What for? Flaring up like that. I rather suspect it's not last time. So? So. Might get a bit airy sometimes. Who's complaining? Well, Ray's not bothered, is he? No, Ray's not, did he? Oh. Hey, I suppose there's no chance you... Me? No chance, mate. Well, I don't mind. What? Hey? Tenner. No skin off my nose, is it? Would you? Look, for a free pint, I'd do out. Even our early. Mm. Yeah, well, you've got to be a bit tactful, you know. I mean, uh, just drop it in casual. I'm going to be the best man. I mean, we don't want to be too obvious, do we? Right. Hey, was that wise, Al? Well, I didn't, didn't tell you, no. I never thought he'd go. <laughs> you better put him a pint up. Say. Well, what? What she say? Ah, uh, well, she said it was nice of you to send me over, even though you hadn't got the guts yourself. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Flaming out Roberts, I might have known it. Oh, I got Ken here, Mark, for it. Yeah, <laughs> you and me both, mate. Did you come to be best man or not? No, too much like hard work. Yeah, all them telegrams to read out. Speeches to make. Staying sober on stag night. Well, well out of it, mate. Definitely. Yeah, keep going. You might convince yourselves yet. Now then, a bottle of champagne. Certainly, madam. A half, a medium, or a jumbo? A medium. Hey, no, on second thoughts, I'll have a pint and a vodka. Now, what were we nearly celebrating? Well... Two weeks from today, you will be addressing me as Rita Furkler, Mrs. of Number 9 Coronation Street. In short, I will have joined the ranks of respectable married women. Two weeks today, yes. It's well, 20th of April, to be exact. That is worth celebrating. Frederick, a bottle of Mrs. Walker's champagne from the cellar on the double. Uh -huh. You heard. A, I said a pint. I would a flaming pay for it if you're too keen. Can I kiss him again? No. Hey! <laughs> Say joking. Get off! <laughs>